Hello, Gap Math students. Um, what we got here is a video for um, intro to uh, percents, ratios, and proportions. Uh, objectives 83 through 85. So you should um, take out your packet um, and get to the page that starts out with objectives 80 three through 85, so it should look like this. If you don't have that, hit pause, go grab, grab that. Um, this is probably, um, in math, one of the most useful things that we might look at, um, just because it can be used in a lot of different ways in real life. Um, it can be uh, with, like, um, baking, cooking, construction, um, making money, um, nutrition, uh, just a lot of different ways of um, basically it's having some information and then finding a missing part of information. Um, and we're not talking like in that necessarily in some of the algebra ways and stuff like that where you've done that before, finding a missing part. But um using what's called proportions. So a proportion is just gonna be setting two ratios equal to each other. Um, so what these problems are gonna look like is, um, they're gonna give you some bits of information and there's gonna be something missing or what they're, or maybe it's something they're wondering about. Um, what would the missing part be? And we're gonna solve that, okay? So we're gonna do a total of eight problems um, and we're going to kind of, I'm going to split them up into kind of four easier ones and then four that could be a little tricky. And you'll see what we, what I mean when we um, get to that. So we're going to start with number one here and I'll kind of explain how to look at these problems as we go because they can give you the information in a lot of different ways. So um, number one, it says they, um, they bought 15 cases of juice for a party. Um, she bought four cases of bottled water for every five cases of, um, and it says how many cases of bottled water did they buy, okay? Sometimes it's going to be very important because it might be that you're making a mixture or if you're making something, building something, if, if you have the certain right amounts together, it's going to be very important. Now, this problem maybe seems like you know, maybe a certain number of people want water and a certain number of people want um, juice. And maybe for every four people that want water, five want juice. Maybe that's important or something. But you'll see in other problems, it, it's going to be pretty important um, finding the right answers. You know, and especially like in real life, when you have to mix certain things, it could, it could be construction if you have to mix paints or, you know, even for art or something like that, or baking. If you're mixing stuff in the wrong proportions, then it, it can really screw things up. So anyways, so in this problem, there's always going to be like what I would call a known pair and then something what I'm going to call an unknown pair. So the known pair is going to be four, when you have four cases of bottled water, there's going to be five cases of juice. And you're not going to have to write this down for every problem, but that's kind of our known pair. Okay, then the unknown pair is 15 cases of juice, and then they're wondering how many cases of bottled water goes with that. So, um, if we have 15 juice, we're saying how much water, that's our unknown pair. Okay, so in this problem, the items in both the known pair and the unknown pair are the same. It's juice and water. These easy problems that we look, what I call the easy problems, are going to be like that. And then we'll look at something different in the tricky one. So um, this one I'll probably do two different ways. And just to show you that it can be done two different ways. And then um, I'll sh we won't do it that way for every problem. But um, what you're going to do is you're going to set up fractions with, your, with the items that are in that the pairs are made up of. So in this case, we have juice and water. And eventually, I'll just use first letters or whatever. And I tend to like to use the unknown pair first. 
So 15 juice goes with how many water? We don't know. 15 juice. And here you can use X, you can use question mark, you can use whatever, okay? And then we have to match that up with the known pair. Now we have to do it in the same order. No, no, I can't really see that there. So the juice has to, if we set it up this way, the juice has to go up on top, the water has to go on the bottom. So in this sentence, don't always just look and say, okay, it's the first one on top, second one on the bottom. We have to match it up with how we set this up. So when we have five cases of juice, we have four cases of water, okay? Now, to solve this, you could do it a couple different ways. Sometimes the numbers work out easy, and you might look at and say, oh, 15 divided by 3 is 5, so what divided by 3 is 4? And the answer is 12, okay? Now, if that didn't make sense, the way that will always work is, and we've talked a little bit about this, is the cross multiplying divide. So if you have a proportion or two fractions equal, you take the diagonal that has two numbers and you multiply them. So 15 times four, and you divide by the other number, okay? So 15 times four is 60, divide by five, and that's our 12, okay? Now, I'm going to do this one a second way just to show you that it doesn't, that there's two ways of doing this. Um, let's say someone else was doing this problem and, and they follow the same steps. We have a known pair, we have an unknown pair, but they say, okay, we're comparing water and juice. So here we're doing juice and water. Well, when I set up my unknown pair, we don't know the water that goes with 15 juice. And that's fine. It looks different than over here. Then with the known pair, we have four cases of water goes with five cases of juice. Now what you can see is it looks different, but the cross multiplying divide is the same. I take the diagonal with two numbers. It's still 15 and four, okay? And I divide by the other number. That's still gonna equal 12, okay? So just to show you that it can be done both ways. All right, let's look at um, a couple other easier ones. I would classify in the easier ones. So number two, there are 14 shirts in the dresser. The ratio of sh shirts to shorts is seven to four, okay? How many pairs of shorts are in the dresser? So. The actuality of what's in the dresser is an unknown pair, okay? We have 14 shirts, and how many pairs of shorts go with that? Okay, so that would be our unknown pair. Our known ratio or our known pair is seven to four. And again, look at the order, shirts to shorts, seven to four. Okay, so the unknown pair of shirts and shorts, the known pair of shirts and shorts, so the two things we're going to use to set this up is shirts and shorts. Now, again, it doesn't matter what you put on top, what you put on bottom, as long as after you set it up, you put the numbers in accordingly. So for my unknown pair, I know there's 14, short, or 14 shirts, and they're asking how many shorts would there be if there's 14 shirts? Our known pair, shirts to shorts, is seven to four. So shirts would be seven, and shorts would be four. Now just make sure if I had set this up, shirts this would be the other. Now, to solve this again, you might. There's some people that can just look at this and know it because the fractions work out pretty simple, but otherwise the other um, method here is cross multiply and divide. So take the diagonal with two numbers, multiply those, divide by the third number. So 
So 14 times 4 is 56 divided by 7 is 8. Okay. And again, some people might be able to look at that because 14 to 7 is dividing by 2. So what divided by 2 is 4? Well, it's 8. Okay. All right. We're going to skip 3 because it's very similar to 1. Um, we're going to come back to 4 because I'm going to say that's kind of a tricky one. We're going to come back to that. So let's look at 5. The ratio of white socks to colored socks is 5 to 2. So this is white to colored. Keith counts 15 pairs of white socks. How many pairs of color socks does he have? So then the unknown pair is 15 white and question mark color. So the unknown pair talks about white and colored. The known pair talks about white and colored. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go white over color. Okay. Now, again, you could set up the known pair first. I'd, I'm getting in the habit of setting up the unknown pair first. So white, we know there's 15, and we want to know with, when there's 15, how many colored pair are there? Then the known pair talks about white to colored. So white to colored is five to two. Okay. Now again, you might be able to look at this and solve it. If not, cross multiply, take the diagonal two numbers is so 15 times 2 divided by the third number, which is 5. So that's 30. 5 by 5, the answer is 6. Okay. So again, what I mean by you maybe could have solved that by looking at it. If I go this way, 5 to 15, I'd have to multiply by 3. So 2 to here, I'd have to multiply by 3. That would give me 6. Okay. One more of what's like kind of consider the easy ones and then we'll look at the tricky ones so number six an ice cream sh shop sold um looking at the looking at the ones we've done so far okay. um so number six ice cream shop sold 35 ice cream cones yesterday. The ratio, ratio of chocolate ice cream cones sold to the total number of ice cream was 2 to 5. How many chocolate ice cream cones uh, did the ice cream shop sell yesterday? So we have a known pair is chocolate the total. So that means there's it's two to five, so chocolate to total. When there's two chocolate, there's five total. Okay, it says how many chocolate ice cream cones um, did the ice cream shop sell yesterday? So it does tell us there was 35 yesterday, and they're asking about how many chocolates. So the unknown pair is chocolate in total. Okay, so I'm gonna go chocolate. In total. Okay, so for the unknown pair, 35 represents, now you always have to understand, is that our chocolate or is that our total? They made that many yesterday, so that's the total. And they're wondering, when there's 35 total, how many are chocolate? So that's, that's one of the main parts, is just understanding what is what they're looking for and what we have. Now we're going to use this ratio here. I'll always double check the order. Sometimes it won't be in the same order that's listed. So this is chocolate to total. So that's why I put the C to T. And that is the same way we put it here. So we can put in two to five. So whenever there's two chocolate, that means there's five total. Okay. So again, some people might be able to look at that and solve it. Otherwise, Take the diagonal with two numbers, cross multiply, so 35 times 2, divide by the other number. So 35 times 2 is 70, divide by 5, type it in, that gives you 14. Okay, 
Otherwise, you could have looked and said, well, to get from five to 35, and I have to multiply by seven. So two times seven, because so you have to do the same thing to make it equal, um, is 14. Okay. All right. So that are kind of more of the basic ones. Now um, we're going to go back and look at some that might be a little, little trickier. Okay. And I'll explain why. Um, on Saturday, middle school tennis team played in a tournament. The ratio matches one to total number of matches played was two to three. So one to total, W to T. The middle school tennis lost five matches. How many total matches did the team play? Okay, so the unknown pair here says lost to total. Okay, so when they lose five, they want to know how many total. So I want to solve for the unknown pair. And that deals with knowing a loss value and looking for a total value. Okay, so now in that unknown pair, when we lose five, we want to know how many total matches were there. Now, here's where you have to be careful why this one is trickier. Okay, a lot of people think, okay, the other ratio is two to three, so I either have to go two over three or three over two. Okay, now be careful. This says one, the number one to the total, okay, is two to three. We need a loss, okay? Total is given here, okay? Total should be three, okay, because that's what it says. Now, one to total, so the number one, they won two games if there's three total games, okay? Well, if we need to find the number lost to total, oops, total, if there's three total games and the team won two of them, how many did they lose? Well, one. Okay, if there's three games total, if there's no ties, they won two and lost one. Okay, so you would define, define that, and I should, you know, I hope this doesn't confuse you by writing it down, but you take the total minus how many they won, that tells you how many they lost. They lost one. Now we have the missing value we need, okay? And that's why this one's just a little trickier, okay? Because... We don't use one of the numbers they gave us, but we use it to find the number we need. Okay, again, if you need to, cross multiply and divide. So five times three, divide by the third number. It's 15 divided by one equals 15. Okay, and again, you might be able to look at that by saying one to five, you multiply by five. So three times five would give you 15, okay? All right, let's look at just a few more, what I would say, call more of the tricky ones, and then we'll be done. So seven, let's say is a little bit of a tricky one. So um, local baseball tournament includes in-state and out-of-state baseball teams. The ratio of in-state to total, so that's going to be important, in the tournament was one to five. There are 16 out of state teams in the tournament. How many teams are in the tournament all together? So for the unknown pair, we want to, when there are 16 out of state, we want to know how many teams are total all, or all together, which is a total. So in our, our unknown pair, we're looking at out of state and total. And we know when there's 16 out of state, we're looking for our total. Okay, so that's our that's what our question is about. They're saying if we have 16 out of state teams, how many total teams do we have? So again, the mistake would be trying to use a one to five or a five to one here. So what we have is in state to total was what they that's an ugly T. Um they gave us in state to total. In state to total is one to five. 
we need out in total. Okay, so again, a lot of you might be able to just look at this and figure that out. The total is still five. If out of those five, one is an in state, how many are out of state? Four. Okay, so again, if we just said, well, there's five total teams, there's one that's in state, so subtract that one, that leaves four to be out state. Okay, so now we can set this up and say, okay, total, when there's five total teams, four of them are out of state. Okay, so um, again, some of you might be able to look at and solve it. When in doubt, you can take the cross multiply, so the diagonal that has two numbers, so 16 times five, divide by um, the other number, which is four, and we get 80 here, divided by four, was 20. Okay, all right, so let's look. Um, number eight, I'll qualify this one as kind of a tricky one. It says in a gym class, the ratio of girls to total. So girls to total is four to nine. There are 20 boys in the class. How many students are in the gym class? So what we're looking for, the unknown pair, is when we have 20 boys, how many students are there total? That's the question. So we're gonna set up using the unknown pair, boys and total. So when there's 20, we don't know how many total there are. Now, this ratio here is four to nine, but again, that was girls to total is four to nine. So if we need boys in total, total still nine. If they're out of nine people, if four are girls, how many are left to be boys? Five. Okay, again, we have nine total. We take out the four girls. That leaves five that are boys. So now this is the pair we need to use. When there's five boys, that means there's nine total kids. Okay. Again, you might be able, by now you might be getting good. And the numbers don't always work out nice, but in these problems, it look like they are to look at, okay, five times four gives me 20, so nine times four is 36, so that should be the answer. Otherwise, if you can't look at it and solve it, take the cross multiply, so 20 times nine, divide by the third number, which is five, this gives you 180, divided by five, gives you 36 as the answer. And we're just gonna do just one more problem. We're gonna do number 11. This is the last example, oops, last example of a tricky one, okay? Um, so it's gonna say, um, during the last game, the ratios of baskets made to total was two to five. Okay, so made total two to five, or total attempted, okay? It says if they missed 12 baskets, how many baskets were attempted? Okay, so again, in the unknown pair or the situation we're trying to fix or to solve here, if there was 12 missed, so that's key. How many total were attempted? Okay, so 12 were missed, and we want to know well, how many were taken then. This, the given ratio, was 2 to 5, but that was made to total. 
So we need to know missed the total. So if there's five total shots attempted and they made two of them, how many are left that they missed? It means they missed. Again, if we took five shots, we take out the two that we made, that leaves three shots that were missed. Okay, so now we're using this ratio. If there was five shots attempted, three of them were missed. Okay, again, you might be able to look at this and say, oh, to go to three to four, I have to multiply by four. So five times four gives me 20. Or, when in doubt, take the diagonal with two numbers. 12 times five, divide by the other number. It's three, so 12 times five is 60, divided by three is 20. Okay. Also, just the, I did this on the first problem. I'll just do it on the last. Remember, it's not always going to be question mark in this corner. You could, I mean, there's a lot of different ways of setting this up. You could have set this one up by saying total over missed instead. Okay. Well, then it would look like, and you could, if you, if it just happened, you could have put the known pair first. Well, we figured out over here, well, if there's five total, we missed three. In the situation we're looking for, we don't know the total, and we missed, but we missed 12. It's still going to be the same thing. Go three to 12, you multiply by four, so multiply five times four, you get 20. Or the cross multiply and divide would be the same. Five times 12 on the top, divide by the third number, and you get the same. So I just wanted to show you, I showed you on the first problem, I'll show you in the last problem that there is different ways of setting it up. As long as you keep everything in order, okay, and make sure the numbers match up with um, the items that you're putting over here, okay? All right, so there's extra problems here that you can try. You know, I would try a few different problems. Um, there's not too many. You could probably try them all and really make sure you're ready for the test. Um, but otherwise, take a um, picture of these pages um, that you've Again, you should have copied this into your packet. Take a picture, send it to me, you get the points, which again is 50% of your grade. And when you try these, if you have any questions, um, not understanding something, let me know.